So as I am editing this video, um, let me just apologize in advance because for the next few clips, I sound completely delusional because I think I really was delusional at that time. But um, I guess enjoy the next few clips and please don't judge me. <laughs> I look like my eyes are naked, but it's really because I only have like two lash extensions left. My lashes. Like I literally have like one, two, three, four, five. I have five lash extensions left. I didn't vlog last week at all. I was feeling super. Sh <laughs> like, see, you can touch them. <laughs> you were like one eyelash, two eyelash. One, two, three. Oh! <laughs> wow! They're still going. Wow, well, I still have a lot of natural lashes left. Interesting. So I walked in extremely late to class today. <laughs> there was construction happening on the road that I normally take. They were repaving the road today. But they were doing like repaving. And I'm thinking like, why would you repave? And the one time everyone's trying to get to work in school. I totally feel that when I'm driving to LA. Like you can repave any other time of the day. What should they repave at night? I literally was stuck in the same spot for like 17 minutes before we started moving. Moving nine miles per hour, <laughs> and I was like, I'm not gonna make it. But I didn't even care because it hit like 8:10, 8:10, and then at that point I was like, I'm already late. Let's go pick up some Starbucks. So I went to go pick me some Starbucks, and I walked into class at like 8:30. <laughs> Guys, this is Avery. Like, what is it called? What was that one class that we did? Health promotion. It's like health promotion all over again. Yes. Say that again. I'm so funny. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I have no idea what the cut man costume stands for, like in like pop culture or the last two some ran wraps on that. Kind of scared. The point is so there's not enough room to fill, and I'm getting worn out and tired and weak. So I'm gonna stretch my heart muscle. And he's really stretching. Okay? <laughs> Do I, wait, do I remove this? Okay, so, when it comes to pouch, which looks like this, or the gray one in your bag, there are urostomy pouches for people that have bladder cancer and have urine coming out of their stoma, or people that have ileostomy, which is on the left side of your small intestine. People, you know, it's not a good life sometimes, so we try to make it less frustrating for them, so we have some choices that we can give them. This type of gas can come out without ballooning the pouch up. So when you have a stoma, it's still gonna pass gas. It is quite bright. And we have clinicals today. Uh, I don't know why I'm suddenly tired. I think it's because I have a food coma. A couple of me and my friends from my clinical group went to go get breakfast at this really popular breakfast spot in our town. That was like 30 minutes ago, and I think the food is finally hitting me. But I'm barely about to get on the floor right now. And to add to that, I lost my stethoscope, so I'm borrowing my mom's old one. Just such a disaster, honestly. <laughs> I knocked out last night, like knocked out. Couple updates, I got my eyelash extensions off yesterday because it was about time, <laughs> like I only had three lashes left on each eye and I just figured 
I don't need to do another fill. My lashes need a break. <laughs> but I fell asleep last night the second I got home. So I forgot to do midnight S bars. So I guess we're doing uh, 7 a.m. S bars. Uh, patient, 83 year old male. Really sad story actually because he was found face down on the ground by his niece. They're assuming that he's probably been face down for two to five days. Did a CT scan and they found that he had a hemorrhagic stroke. Um, right sided weakness and loss of ability on all of his right extremities. Um, he's not looking too good. He's been in the hospital for a decent amount of time and he's now developed ARDS, which is acute respiratory distress syndrome. And it is very difficult to come back from that because now you have alveolar damage and refractory hypoxemia. And it affects ventilation and perfusion and it's... Mm. He's on some really high vent settings. He is currently on APRV, which is probably the most invasive ventilation mode. And it's pretty severe. He also developed AKI on the time that he was here, and aside from that, he is now GCS 10. Surprisingly, neurologically speaking, he's a lot better than I would have assumed, especially from his whole chief complaint and what had happened to him, because his pupils are still reactive in Perla 2 to 1, which is really impressive, and he can follow some commands on his left side, but he is on Presidex, to keep him at a RAS goal score of negative one, and he's just waiting for placement at LTAC at this point. So we're just seeing what can happen. But it was really interesting to get to the work with him because I was in the neuro ICU, which is the first time I'd actually been there. And surprisingly, it exceeded my expectations and I actually had a pretty fun day at clinicals taking care of him. So yeah, we're going to work today. <laughs> It. Let me turn down my music, <laughs> first of all. Anyways, um, I am in the studio all by my lonesome. Quite frankly, the entire art department is like empty today because everybody else that goes to school here had a free day so that they could go on a field trip. So actually, there's like nobody in the entire department, not just in the ceramics room. So I'm completely by myself, <laughs> which is fine. But I am going to start working on some pieces. I really, 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 like really need to make some headway on the pieces that I've been working on because I actually am trying to bisque fire sometime next week, which might be a push. I'm not sure it's gonna happen. I might be a little bit late on the deadlines that I set for myself because also next week is my critical care test two and it's actually technically considered the hardest test out of all the tests that we have to take because it is mainly focusing on EKGs and a lot of hemodynamic stuff and cardiac stuff that aren't really my favorite and shock as well. So hmm, I really need to study for that. But I also really need to finish pieces. And the sucky part is I am still prototyping. So I actually haven't settled on a specific style yet and now I'm starting to second guess all the things that I thought I was going to make. I might drop it down to only 10 mugs instead of the 11 plus the 4 that I was going to gift to a friend. I finished the ones that I was already planning on gifting but I don't think I'm going to be able to make it's literally just one extra but to me I'm thinking <sighs> maybe I should make 12. I don't even know. I am so stressed out and I have no idea what style I want to work on. I've been sketching out all my ideas and I still haven't really fully fell in love with one and decided that that was the one. Also because aside from the drawing, I need to make sure it's easy to execute like physically. So that's another component I need to worry about. But it's just going to be a really busy work day today. I might be here for like five or six hours. <laughs> really trying to finish a lot of stuff. But on top of that, I have schoolwork and homework I need to work on later, so wish me luck for the next five hours. Hopefully I get something done.